Hey everyone, you're listening to InfoQuench with Jeff and Amy. We're chatting about how to get the most out of life and covering a ton of interesting topics. So there's sure to be something for just about everyone. Let's get to it. Hey everybody and welcome to InfoQuench. I'm your host Jeff and I'm Amy and this episode we're going to be talking about 18 ways to relax. We are fresh off vacation and we want to continue that relax vibe even though we're back home and into the regular swing of things. So I was researching different ways that you can relax and I thought I'd share that with our listeners. You don't research do you? Eh, A little bit. You do. You research. I know. It's uh, very important to relax, I think. Yes, we were lucky enough to vacation on the beautiful island of Grand Manan here in New Brunswick in Canada. And we were able to go to sleep to the sound of waves. And now we're back in our urban setting with all of the wonderful sounds that go along with that. Yes, it's uh, one of the things that we were already used to is the highest tides because we live along the Bay of Fundy as well. But tides change every six hours. So up and down up and it's crazy yeah it's really great to watch it's uh, quite a power of nature and it helped me sleep i'll tell you that much oh yeah the rhythm of the waves there's nothing like it and the salt air it's uh good stuff i'm telling you good stuff good stuff so the quote for this episode is from william burroughs oh yes william i burroughs. recently read naked lunch i got you to read naked lunch yes yeah, a very well, i didn't get you to i just suggested yeah, it a long time ago you made me to you tie me to the chair and put it up in front of my eyes yeah and prop my eyelids open <laughs> Then we watched the documentary on him, remember? The Criterion one. Yeah, complete with how he shot his wife. Yeah, that's pretty bizarre. Interesting documentary. But uh, the quote for relax is, your mind will answer most questions if you learn to relax and wait for the answer. So just one more push for relaxation, aside from the fact that it's just an awesome thing to do, but it also might help you answer some pressing questions you got going on in your life. Yeah, I love relaxing. Sometimes you just need to sit back. Opens up your mind. Sit back and chillax, and yeah. and all the answers will flow to us. So thank you, Burroughs, for that awesome quote. And Jeff really needs to learn how to relax because we have some neighborhood dogs that are getting on his last nerve. <sighs> yeah. Well, it's only one dog, but it's like a six-month-old German it's Shepherd. It's only one dog. Yeah, it's it only one dog. Like six dogs out there. I know. See? He's able to fluctuate his bark. I'm glad you uh, agree with me with this <laughs> because, yeah. Uh, it's 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 pretty annoying actually uh you know seven sometimes sometimes seven o'clock in the morning usually eight though it's just like and it's yeah it's very very close to us too it's like directly across the street so we are in direct firing range of the uh barking and uh i need to sleep during that time Yes, Jeff works shift work, so he sometimes has to sleep yeah. during the day, and uh, those dogs are really interfering with that. And I have to, I have to tell our listeners this because I think it was hilarious. I was downstairs and I started laughing, and hmm. and Jeff was hmm. wondering why. And it's because he had this blank notebook open, and it was titled Bark Log, and he had written down <laughs> the times. So he was tracking the times that well, the dogs were barking. <laughs> if it comes down to it, I'm going to have to make a formal complaint, and in order to you know be taken seriously you gotta you gotta let them know how much the dog is barking so yeah i started a bark log i came up with that name i what about dog log i know dog log would have been better actually i mean there's bark on a log yeah so there's that but anyway i know i loved it i thought it was great it (laughs) was like i felt like it was something i would do and i was happy to see you be so uh meticulous (laughs) in your tracking of the annoyances of our neighborhood anyways let's get into ways to relax and uh that don't involve barking dogs so one is well, specifically, if you are going on vacation uh, or even just a trip, you know, a quick getaway, give yourself a buffer before and after you actually make that trip. So when I say a buffer, a buffer from when you start and finish work. This right. this last vacation, I finished work on Friday, but we actually didn't go away until the Monday, which was great because I think for most of us, I know at least for me, it takes me a few days to get out of the work mindset yeah. and to get into vacation mode. And I didn't really want to waste that time getting into vacation mode while I was, you know, we were paying to be away and enjoying the uh, accommodations. Yeah, so you just pretend that you're on vacation at home for two days and then go away and actually be on vacation. You're all ready for it. Well, yes, yeah, so it just gives a couple of extra days to, to clear the head and then you are ready to go. And a couple extra days to pack, which we always need anyway. And it's always good to do that on the way back too. you know, uh, don't arrive and then have to 
go straight to work the next day. Like, give yourself a little time. Sometimes we need extra time just to relax from the vacation, depending on yeah. how busy our vacation was. I like I like chill vacations myself, you know, where there's really not that much of an on the agenda. I do too. Yeah. I think even when we do travel to larger cities, and hopefully we'll be able to get back into that post pandemic. But uh, even when we do larger cities, I I prefer not to have a rigid schedule. Yeah, I find a lot of people they feel like in order to have a successful trip, they need to have it filled with absolutely everything at or anything at any time. You know what I mean? When really some of the best things to do is just to relax and take a break and just you know soak in where you're at. Rather than like rushing to this museum and to this museum and, you know, just do it all. Always There's doing something. There's a lot something. of museums in there. I know. We don't really, that's the thing. We never really go to too many museums when we're away. We have before. Like we went to the Dali Museum, I think. And yes, and, we, and the Louvre, Paris. of course. You've got to go yeah. to the Louvre if you're in Paris. So, and, and MoMA and I guess um, the Tate Modern. I guess we go to a few museums. And the Pompidou. But... Pompidou. What? <laughs> Let's go on to number two of ways to relax. And this one is to stop time. And I think one of the reasons that vacation can be so relaxing is we aren't watching the clock, assuming you don't have a a rigid itinerary. But, you know, we're not getting up for a certain time for work and we're not watching our calendars for meetings. And all of that really just allows your brain to relax. You don't have that constant monitoring in the background of what time of day it is. And, I mean, you can mimic that same vacation vibe in your house on the weekend, on a pick, you know, a Saturday or Sunday, and just don't look at the clocks. Face them, you know, even actually turn them around. I did that on our vacation when we were away. They had a, a little clock radio on the nightstand, and I faced it against the wall because I didn't really you didn't want to, see to the, know what time the it time was. all the time. You know, you could get like a truckload of sand and bring it into your living room and have a sandcastle contest. If you really wanted to do, you know, that doesn't sound relaxing have a at vacation all. at home. <laughs> that sounds like a whole lot of work for me on the on the back end. Well, friend, on Friends, there was an episode of Friends they did that. They brought oh, sand they? in. Oh, yes. That's funny. Yeah. That what? makes sense, though, I guess. No, it's That's a great idea. Fun. I didn't mean to crap all over your sand no, it's idea. No, it's, it's a really horrible idea, actually. And, and we have a cat, so it I'm could be I'm happy that a... you think it is, because I was just kind of joking, and I really don't want a truck full of sand in our living room. Our cat would really crap all over the idea and treat our living room as a giant litter box, I I suspect. Yeah, great fun. (laughs) So, you know, even if it's not wearing your watch or just, you know, not booking things at a certain time, just take a day or two over the weekend and stop time. Yeah, stop time. Get up when you're done sleeping. Go to sleep when you're tired. Take a nap when you want to and don't pay attention. Don't set the alarm. I, I just, I personally find that that's a relaxing thing to do. So I'm going to move on to number three. Number three. This is more an immediate trick that you can do if you're in a state of stress or anxiety. And it is just to say your ABCs backward. Oh, yes. Which isn't easy to do. I've tried it. It's not anything at all like, you know, being on vacation. It's very stressful, actually, to go from the... <laughs> back of the alphabet to the front and try to remember you're gonna ask me to do it aren't you i am no i don't want it okay uh z y x uh uh w seriously you're being serious T, with this you what no, what where happened oh, yeah. what happened to v oh i forgot v yeah that's all right <laughs> I guess some letters point, as much just as get it's... forgotten <laughs> <laughs> it's much as just stressful for you to say the alphabet backward. I guess the point is, is that depending on how stressful a situation you may be in, mm-hmm. in terms of comparing the two, saying the alphabet backward is something that may occupy your mind with a less stressful activity than the other thing that you may be enduring. So that's true. It could stand in. But if you're just sitting around and you just decide to randomly say the alphabet backward, apparently that can be stress-inducing for some. Well, yeah, or if you just put on the spot and you know, someone tells you to do the alphabet from back to the front, it's it's stressful, I've got to tell you. All right. Well... <laughs> Why don't you do it? You do it. Go. Z-Y-X-W-V-U-T-S-R. How far do you want me to go? Oh, the whole thing. No, our Q-P- listeners don't want to hear oh. <laughs> Okay. All right, so fine. You're fine You're fine with it, um, and I don't enjoy doing it. All right, so. then. Hopefully our listeners enjoyed that little 
theatrics, the theatrics of our podcast. Number four is to be present. And I think this is one that's said often, but it can't be said often enough in terms of relaxing, being present in your, in your current moment can really be a way for your mind to relax. And there are traditional ways of meditation, yoga, focusing on your breath. Mm -hmm. One of the ones I've heard recently talked about was focusing on five senses so again, if you're in a situation where it's particularly stressful or you're just looking for a few moments of extra relaxation, you can close your eyes and focus on what you can see. I'm just okay. checking to see if Jeff's paying attention here. I was just going to call you out on it. I was it, like, okay. And then, it's black. then you caught it though. But so. you're colorblind, so maybe it wouldn't even be black. Right. But I can still see things. Actually, you know when you close your eyes, sometimes it's like the galaxy in there. Yes. You know what I I'm do. saying? It's like static. You smell what I'm cooking on that one? Yeah. Yeah. So, no, with the five senses, you don't need to close your eyes. You can keep them open and you can focus on something you can see, think about something that you can hear. I'm doing it now. Smell. Yeah. Touch okay. and taste. Maybe you're just tasting the last thing you ate. Yeah. And if that's the case, maybe my veggie you need to brush chili, it. that was really awesome. It was it was actually really awesome. Yeah. Why why do you say that like you're surprised? It was actually Really awesome because I'm I'm so surprised it was actually awesome because everything else you cook is crap. <laughs> is that <laughs> how right. it came out? Maybe <laughs> I need it was to work actually, on my compliments. No, I'm I'm just joking. I I know you enjoyed it. I'll take you, away the. I just like the word actually. I throw it in all the time. I didn't mean it to come across as though I. was You didn't being, leave any in your you know, bowl, so I know you liked it. Yes. Yeah. That's true, and none of it went <laughs> into the compost. Joking. Yeah. <laughs> it was just the right amount of spiciness. Well, sometimes you overspice stuff. Me. Yeah. Oh, Sometimes. overspice it. Oh. Well, I mean, I like spicy. What but... have I overspiced? Number five. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Write. Write is a great way to relax. Uh, whether you're writing in a journal, whether you're... It's a form of therapy. Well, particularly, I think if your mind is racing and you have all of these different things that you're, you're focused on or dwelling on, mm -hmm. or if you have even something that you're worried you're going to forget about, mm -hmm. you can put it down on paper and know that it's stored there and then you can stop storing it in your, you know, valuable brain space and focus on more important things like being present and relaxing. That's right. Another thing that people can do is, you know, if they're having some stress, even around a relationship or a situation, you can sometimes write a letter to somebody. You know, yes. write a letter, you know, to get that, f those feelings out on paper. It's not even a letter that you would need to send, but that can help clear the, clear the situation. Or if you're just looking for a more pleasant activity, you can write a letter to somebody that you're thinking about or somebody that you miss. And uh, that letters, be... remember getting letters in the mail? It's oh, kind it of was... a bygone thing now. It was awesome. You know? And just I, try to talk through the motorcycles, honey. Yes. Just, That's all I'm you just talking through the motorcycles. Just talking through I don't the know if the listeners can pick it up, but See, it is a Saturday night, hot time in the city. Motorcycle race going on out front. <laughs> People are out enjoying the, the nice weather and messing up our podcast recording. That's right. Thanks a lot. So be it. Uh, but you're right. There's no better feeling than getting writing a letter and getting a letter in the mail. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, it's pretty cool. Nowadays, if joy. you get a postcard, you're lucky. Yeah. Number six, connect with nature. I, I always feel better after a walk through the woods. I do. I think the older no I get, going on. the more I'm appreciative of the restoration that nature offers us when we if just I spend just, a little bit of time. The thing is, though, if I just spent like 18 hours lost in the woods, I wouldn't want to go through it for another walk in the woods to feel better. So that would be the only time a walk in the woods wouldn't work to lift your spirits. Well, unless you're on the show alone on the History Channel and in the running to win $500,000. That's true. You that know, would be I, pretty exciting. That would be pretty We still need to watch the season finale of that, by the way. We and do. And listeners, if you've not checked out that show, it's a great show. Even if you're not a reality television fan, the History Channel, I think, probably has a little bit more credibility than a lot of other channels and what they do is they drop people off in the wilderness with their own camera equipment so there isn't a camera crew they have a medical crew that goes in and checks on them i think maybe once a week and they have an emergency button to have themselves extracted yeah there's usually about 10 participants and, and the last one the to last one clock tap wins. out wins 500,000 and it's really great if you know it's cool if, to see what they make and how they how they go about surviving 
Yes, they make their shelters and they've got to find food off the land. They're dropped in different locations, but a lot of the locations are actually here in Canada. Yeah, uh, British Van- Columbia. Vancouver Island. They're currently in northern British Columbia. So beautiful landscapes and walking through the woods in some of those places would be quite relaxing unless you come across the grizzly bears. Not not relaxing at all. <laughs> but if you are going out in nature, I would encourage you not to drown out the sounds of nature with headphones by listening to music, but just focusing on the sounds around you, the smells around you, and not necessarily going for a workout or a hike or just sitting just, still. Yeah, just take it easy and soak in the magic of nature. I know I used to love laying on the grass and looking at clouds when I was a kid. Or the and, stars. And, the star- and stargazing is actually a form of therapy that yeah. people are, are doing to give them perspective of their place in the universe. And it's starting to become quite a They should combine all these form. types of therapy, you know, like the handwriting or the uh, journal writing and stargazing. Is there a way to get them all together to get all the power? I don't know, but I wish I, I wish I had a way to capture Jeff's full... He was doing an interpretive dance almost of, of the sun <laughs> I was making the, the world and... with my hands all curled. <laughs> oh, that even rhymed. Oh, I know. This is I'm on a roll. This is why we need to be having like a YouTube video rather than just the audio. That's not hard are... to do. We could do that. Let us know, listeners, if you want that. We'll make it happen. Here's a quick way to relax. Count your change. Mm. <laughs> you know, whether maybe if you're in a waiting room at a hospital and you're, you know, going through a stressful situation there, you can count the change in your purse. Uh, something about counting. Who can does def- that, though? That's something that who does that? It's like seriously? counting sheep to fall asleep. It Nobody relaxes Nobody takes the change from the bottom of their purse when they're waiting at the hospital and starts counting the change. Well. To relax. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Maybe you count the change around your house <laughs> as a way to relax and that's see like how much money you got. That's something that a weird character on Seinfeld would do. <laughs> okay, just, some of these are better than others. She counts her change. I, I read that suggestion. I thought it okay. was a good one. I don't know, man. I think that one's. That I think one's if you're like a change hoarder, that would be very comforting <laughs> like, for what? you. What? Who counts their change to relax? <laughs> I gotta say. Number eight, play. All right, play, play cards. Play games. Play Lego. Be happy because... Play you... cribbage and have your mother skunk you. <laughs> That's what happened to me yesterday. Sorry. You're hearing all about our lives this time. Yes. Yeah. Unlike all the other episodes. But you know, playing You're right is... though. Play is fun. Okay. You'll agree to that. It's yeah. more fun than counting change in the bottom of your purse. <laughs> Big time. That's just bonkers, man. I played Lego the other day and it was great. Although I couldn't find all the bricks of the same color and that was a little stressful. But... Really? There's something about going back to play. As kids, we did it just for the joy. There was no other reason aside mm-hmm. from, you know, no ulterior motive. It's just play for the sake of play. Another in- interesting thing about play that I would like to share, because I spent some time uh, teaching English as a second language in Korea. I found one of the best ways for someone to learn a second language is if you veil the instruction for the day in a game. So they're playing a game and they don't even realize they're learning, but they are. They're having fun and they're learning. So everyone wins. And you're tricking them. You're deceiving the children. Not really. <laughs> I'm helping them. I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> no I think that that's a proven way to, yeah. that play is a great way to, for it works. kids to learn. It works. It's a better way for me to learn. That's for sure. Yep. Number nine is to monotask. Oftentimes when we're stressed out, it's because we're trying to do too many things at once. And right monotasking, doing just one thing, focusing on one topic, one task can just help you get into a more focused mindset and relax a little. I got to say, that's where lists come in. That's how you do, that's how you uh, monotask, right? You go take care of one, then number two, and number three. Yes, that's a good point. And if there's seven things on the list, you do seven of them. (laughs) But just not all at once. (laughs) Not all at once. Do not do anything. Like, you know, don't do two things at once ever is what I'm trying to say. That's right. That would be multitasking, which would be the opposite of monotasking, (laughs) which is exactly what we don't want to do. That's exactly it. We're coming to the definition for this episode, and it is halcyon. Halcyon. H-A-L-C-Y-O-N. I will will make a confession. We recorded this podcast and then had to re-record it. And this de- this definition was in it, and I don't remember it for this time. Oh, yes. That's how bad my memory is. Here's a way not to relax. 
record your podcast <laughs> and have it lost. Yeah, the computer just went kaput. It didn't yeah. die. It just turned off somehow. Yes. I think the cat probably stepped on It's the, always the cat. Yeah, it's the cat. <laughs> <laughs> a crazy cat. He must have hit the, the power button. Where is he anyways? Usually he's yanging. I know. That's I don't okay, know. okay, though. Uh, Halcyon actually means calm, peaceful. Calm and peaceful. Yeah. The Halcyon calm, days. I was, I, was, I was thinking of what else it means, but that's all That's all I had written down was calm and peaceful. <laughs> Halcyon days. Hey, it we, when we, we discussed it, you said you had read that word. In right, the, in a you, book, in, right. The, in the beat writer's books. That's right. And now uh, that we've said it, I'm certain that you will see it everywhere. Our- Halcyon Days is what I remember that being. It might have been like a Kerouac poem or a Ginsberg or something. I don't know. Anyway. Number 10 is to move your body. And there is something and about And stargazing. And stargazing. And ju- write your journal at the same time. You'll yes. blow up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, but going for a walk, just doing a stretch. All of those ways are... are uh, all of those movements are great ways to relax your body and your mind for sure number 11 is all around temperature take a warm bath drink some warm tea be warm get under a nice warm cozy blanket i have a weighted blanket that i bought you have a lair i call it my nest nest rather lair (laughs) i have a bottom well it is it is of layers it's a layers of blank i have the soft blanket that goes underneath and then I have a 15-pound weighted blanket, which I thought was a huge splurge. We're not much We got to have price, baby. I know. <laughs> well, yeah. No, like 25%, I think. Yeah. I think it was like regularly $150 or something ridiculous. Anyway, it was, the, it was the best purchase ever. You love it. it yeah. yeah. And we don't, it's got these little beads in it that are heavy. Yes. Right? Yeah. And you can kind of work them out through the fabric if you really concentrate and want to monotask. <laughs> and I, I just love this blanket. So, but being warm and, you know, there's something about a warm bath. Especially always, in the winter. There's sometimes there's no other way to warm up. I know. They always say drink a warm glass of milk for to help go to sleep. Who but does that? The people who count their change, that's who do that. Babies do it. To relax. What's that? Babies do it. Do they? Yeah. They drink warm milk. It's true, they do. But then we <laughs> stop doing it at some point. After being a baby. That's true, For a reason. But you know what? I bet you there are some people who still drink warm milk. (laughs) Well, why not? (laughs) Number 12. I just picture some... Yeah. What do you do? You put your milk in the microwave? Microwave? (laughs) (laughs) I don't get it at all. Oh, I curdled the milk again, honey. (laughs) I put it on too long. Number 12 is to listen to soothing music or sounds. A great way to relax. And if you have a, a Google Home or... What's the other one? All Echo, all those different little devices. You don't even have to move. You can just say, Hey, Google. Play. Play Ambient Rain. Which is Jeff's favorite. <laughs> he loves mine. Ambient Rain. Although after going on vacation on an island with the windows open, listening to the waves, sometimes yeah. we play waves. I got I to gotta just realize something here. I probably triggered some people who have the OK Google thing going. Oh, when I said that. that's right. So it's probably going off all over the world right now, like some kind of a you weird... You literally just made it rain. I know. I just made it rain. <laughs> oh, oh, that's good, honey. Thanks. How did I miss that one? I don't know. Don't worry. I'm picking up what you're laying down. Wow. Number 13 is to read. Read is a great... Reading's just a great escape. It is. You know, it's hard to concentrate on something else. Although if you do, you end up reading the same line multiple times. That happens to me sometimes. But reading just takes you to a different place. A different world. Yeah. And, you know, into the mind of the author. That's funny because I found for a while that the internet just being, just, you know, wasting time on the internet was uh, was taking the place of reading for me. But now I'm trying to reverse that. I'm reading Braiding Sweetgrass. At oh, this, yeah, you love that book. I know. I'm just finishing it up by Robin Hall Kimmerer. And it, it's an incredible book about nature and science and our connection with uh, the earth. So if you're into that stuff... Again, it's Braden Sweetgrass. And what's really cool about this book is that I came across the word extirpation. Oh, yes, that's right. You showed that to me. Which was a definition from a previous episode. I think a lot of times we we tend to just pick up on things uh, once Mm -hmm. we know them, right? Like when you're looking to buy a new car and all of a sudden you see that the model you're researching all over the place. You're just more tuned into it. Yep. Number 14 is just to protect pockets of time during your week and... What I mean by that yeah, is what just do you mean don't, by have, that? don't have scheduled activities, oh, you yeah. know, 24-7. Pick a couple of evenings during the week or even a full day on the weekend where you 
have absolutely nothing planned and include in that chores. Like don't have any chores planned. One of the great things about being on vacation is you're not looking around the space saying, oh, I've got to paint that room or I've got to clean that or I've got That's to true. you know, do laundry. You, you don't have all that mental chatter of the to-do list running through your head. So set aside some time in your week where you give yourself permission not to focus on chores. We recently talked about restructuring our weekends so that we have one day where we're really focused on our to-dos, our yes. chores, our errands. You know, what do we got on the list or on the go to get done around the house? And then having another day where we are basically chores are forbidden and it's just all about family time <laughs> yeah, and, and fun and play. Someone starts to do a chore. It's like, that is forbidden. <laughs> get back to doing nothing now, now, now. <laughs> go have fun and relax. Go have fun. Play your switch. <laughs> I love this ominous creature, but it's a little frightening as well. Well, yeah, I guess it is. Eh? <laughs> but I really do love that this about vacation. This is a good side, too. I think a hotel room is the ultimate space where you're you're sort of, you have a bed and you're laying there and you're looking around and there's nothing for you to have to do. There, is, like, there is something extremely comforting, not, comforting about that. You don't have a dishwasher that needs to be filled or emptied. Nope. You just, it's really just a hotel room. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, get that hotel room vibe in different pockets of your week and just set aside a little bit of time for sure for no chores and no other scheduled items it's okay to say no when people invite you to do things and you just want to relax well we got really used to that over the pandemic so you're right we did yeah i think a lot of people discovered how much they enjoy it and i think a lot of other continuing to do it and other people discovered how much they detest it. So yeah. to each their own. Wherever what happened you... to Jeff and Amy? They haven't been out of their house since the pandemic ended. It's been <laughs> six months now. <laughs> Peopling is, uh, yeah, something we had to get back used to. We're doing it tonight. Go and see your friends. Did I say those words in the right order? Get back I don't, used to? Get, yeah, uh, probably not, <laughs> but used, I was just going to let it slide. Get back to? <laughs> yeah, let it slide. Number 15 is don't feel you need to earn rest. I think that we have in our society this focus on productivity and we feel like if we are relaxing, we are wasting time. So a lot of times people will be like, oh, I, you know, I need to rest. Well, you, oh, yeah, you've earned it. You've earned well, we it. We don't need to earn it. Just relax. It's like relax a Cub people. Scout badge. You've earned that one. Just put it Here's on your shirt. Here's your relax shirt. badge. Here's your relax badge. It's Napper. You. Yeah, it's just you on a couch, it's like a stick person <laughs> on a couch, <laughs> on a badge. I love that badge, the yep. napping badge. It's a, I have yet to get mine. I work so hard around here, but uh, I hope to get it someday. I can do nothing and get it. <laughs> Relaxing without guilt is, it's not easy to do, but it's awesome. I love napping. Mm-hmm. Me too. <laughs> You had a really good nap today. I know. I, it was solid. It was one of those, I woke up and I didn't even know what day it was or that's where every I nap. was. That's or, every nap for you. Or who I was. <laughs> that's every nap, man. Like what, what happened? About? <laughs> I must have earned it. <laughs> we'll give you the nap badge. How do you, what, what's, what's the nap badge look like? What do you um, think it would look like? I don't know. Maybe it's just a, here's your badge and it's just a big cozy blanket. <laughs> Yes. You just wrap it around. It's a badge you wrap around yourself, <laughs> and it's weighted. Fifteen pounds of fifteen pounds weight. of nap. Number sixteen is to hug someone or something. All right, well, I'll take a hug. Well, we got a big microphone between us. Yeah, that'll stifle the hug. But there is something about the healing power of touch. Again, with the pandemic, a lot of us missed out on on this, and uh, many of us, depending on where you are in the world, we're we're still needing to distance to stay safe. But there is something about hugging. Even I think back to when I was a kid and hugging stuffed animals. And our son actually has this big teddy bear that we got him. And it, I hugged the teddy bear the other day, and it was strangely comforting. Really original name, too. I love it. His name is Bear. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I didn't name him. Well, he got him when he was one. So, I mean, it was an easy word to say, and I'm going with that. Number 17 is to touch yourself. Oh, and not the okay. kind of touching that's illegal to do in public, but right. <laughs> you know, you can massage your own hands, you can massage your own feet. People are rolling their face now with like jade rollers. Just don't do it while you're counting your change. That's right. Because <laughs> you'll look really crazy. Well, and don't yes, 
And you need to wash your hands after you count your change because money is filthy. My mother has told me this. Don't you need to wash your hands after you do anything these days? <laughs> well, like that's true. Could, that's a really good point. You could pick up a pen and then, oh, I got to wash my hands. But whenever I touched change, my mother would always say, some, Not in your own home, though. some old man picked his nose and picked his bum and then touched that penny. <laughs> oh, God. So you, she gave you a whole narrative. Well, that, like yes, a comic there's book. usually a narrative around why we do things uh, when I was growing up, and, and it stuck with me. That is so funny. And that was good advice, Mom. Number 18 is to laugh, laugh. as a way to relax. And whether you're looking, watching stand-up comedy, just laughing with loved ones, or sometimes people just do laugh therapy where they'll fake laugh until it sort of moves over into real laughter. Do you want to try it? (laughs) (laughs) All right. Thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks for listening, everybody. (laughs) Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. Be sure to check out past episodes and subscribe to keep up with what's new. You can find us anywhere you get your podcast. And why not leave a review? You can also follow InfoQuench on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Till Till next time. time.